Hi everyone. This is what I call my fast favorites. I'm going to hit my hips, my spine, and my shoulders with some of my essentials and favorite techniques. So we're going to start with some hovers. Let's begin in standing. Press your feet into the ground, organize your body. So body control, tailbone down to the feet, the glutes are essential, and a strong anterior abdominal wall connection. Hands are going to go onto your hips, and I want you to take a breath in. So this is about a big breath. In fact, I want maximal expansion breathing, which means a nice, slow, but big breath, filling everything you can. So you're going to rise up on the breath, but keep those anterior posterior ribs level. I don't want the front ribs to come up higher than the back. And when you breathe out, engage your core and stay tall. Don't collapse down. Beautiful. Then you're going to breathe in and I want you to go wide. So elbows as wide as you can. Pull that east, west. And when you breathe out, again, stay big. It's a nice loud breath out. Stay tall. And then think about those tricky areas. The kidneys. Try to fill right there. Good. Breathe out. Stay tall. Maybe across the front of the shoulders and the armpits. You have lobes right there. Make sure you expand them. You need the fatty flow and that comes from movement. Good. And then let's do one more maximal expansion breath. Expanding your ribcage to its Fullest capacity. Front back ribs still level. And when you breathe out, strong core. Tensioning all the way around. You got it, good. Okay, keep breathing, keep that core packed. Glutes are still on, hands are gonna come into the small of your back for some swimmers, hovers. Long back of the neck, that's the biggest cheat. Shoulder blades are wide and down, don't let them come up. And you're going to try to bring your elbows behind you. Did you lose your shoulder blades? Did your ribs escape? You want to keep that strong into your abdominal wall. If you're good, pull your hands back behind you so they are off of your back as far as they can be. Now you're going to hover them off there and you're going to extend. I'm going to do three hinges. So if there was a physio ball there, you're squeezing it, your back as far as you can. Good. Then you're going to hinge in and you're not going to touch your spine. You're living back there. Good. Hinge up. Long back of the neck. Good. Shoulder blades down your back and wide. You're still breathing. Glutes are still on. Good. Hinge in. Don't touch anything. One more. Hinging out. Good. And the last one. Hinging in. Good. Relax back down. Done. Right up into our upper swimmers hover and then we'll put them both together. So, you know what to do, glutes on, core is on. You wanna move without compensations, it's only shoulder movement. Good, long back of the neck, shoulder blades are down and wide, then elbows come back, only as far as you can without that compensation. Good, and then hands come off of your head, keep those shoulder blades down, good. Three hinges, you're hinging out, and in. Don't touch your hair, good. Two more, hinging out. And in. Out. And in. Hands come back down, but elbows stay back. Fix your shoulder blades, check your ribs, glutes are on. And then elbows come in. Okay, let's put those two together in a full swimmer supper. So press your feet into the ground. You're still getting some strong, big breaths. Core is still on. Shoulder blades come back. Good. Elbows come back. Good. Hands come off of your back. Control. Good. Extending out. Squeeze that physio ball. You got it. Now you're going to turn your thumbs up. That's external rotation. Check those ribs. Make sure you didn't lose that kidney area. Keep breathing into there. And then you're going to come all the way up, scraping that back wall to your high Y position. Shoulder blades down, really nice elongated neck, and then hinging in. You're gonna try not to touch your hair though. Everything is back, back, back. And then hands come onto your head. Shoulder blades down, hands come off, hinging out, thumbs turn down, and then slowly scraping that back wall. Control your ribs, protect your kidneys. Stop at your low Y, 45 degrees. Hinging in, don't touch your 
back, don't touch your back. Take a couple of breaths here, keep everything back. Think about those loads at the front of your shoulders. Kidneys. Relax down. Done. Head. Into hips. We're going to set up for a hip extension, pails and rounds, in a half kneeling. You will need a pillow, towels, rolled up yoga mat, something to get your knee incredibly comfortable. Do not do this one if the knee hurts. Otherwise, what you're going to do is start to get organized. We're going to do two minutes of time under tension here. Glute is on and core is on. You are then going to drive your shin into the ground and get as tall as you can for me. This tissue here again, it continues up and so this especially attaches to the front of the entire lumbar spine, but it keeps going from there. So we want that line of tension to go all the way up the chain. So shin drives into the ground and you're just constantly trying to go up. Every breath you're going up, your glute is on, so you should be starting to feel a line of tension at the front of the hips. If you don't, you can squeeze your glute more, bring that knee behind you a bit, but do not compromise by losing length in your low back. No extension, we don't want any bananas. All right, get taller for me, drive that shin into the ground, glute is on, good. Good. Keep going, we're gonna give it about 30 more seconds and then do a couple of pails and rails. Up we go. Make sure the front and back ribs are level, that you're not doing the banana, we got it. All right, now from here, let's do one more breath and really establish that into your abdominal wall. Keep that tension. Now you are going to scissor your legs, which means Back leg is going to try to come forward. Front foot is going to try to come back. So you are activating those hip flexors. Give me 10 seconds. Still stay tall. I really want to make sure you don't rib flare. Five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. Now you're going to do the reverse. Squeeze that glute and really try to bring the leg behind you, but again, no back extension and no sacrificing that length that you got. I don't want any of this. Five more seconds, glute on and really trying to pull that leg behind you, behind you, behind you, behind you. Three, two, one. We're going to release that right back into scissor. Front leg back, back leg forward. Stay tall. This is not supposed to be really comfortable. It's an intense one. Good, you're scissoring five more. Four, three, two, one. And then activate that glute a bit more and really try to pull that knee behind you, but not letting that anterior abdominal wall stability be destroyed. This does not change. Keep breathing, keep connecting to this. That intensity of irradiation, which is your core and your breathing right now, is higher intensity than whatever your glute is going to throw at it. For three, two, one. Let's do one more of those scissors. Ten seconds. Squeezing. Front leg pulls back. Back leg pulls forward. You're using your hip flexor. This is how we reorganize that disorganized non viscoelastic tissue. Get that cell-to-cell -cell signaling. Three more seconds. Two, one. And your last hip extension rails. Squeezing the glute, trying to pull it behind you. That's our regress of angular asymmetric loading, but it can't be higher intensity than your core and your radiation. Five more. Four, three, two, one. And release. Whew gets us out of those hip flexors. We want core and glute to be zone one, not our hip flexor. Okay, so again, at least two minutes of time under tension, let's start setting it up. Glute is on to start, core is on, drive the shin into the ground and get tall for me. You can hold on for balance to a wall. This leg can be out as far as you want for stability. And you're just starting to find that line of tension through the front of the hip. If you need to, as long as you don't steal it from your back, you can bring this knee behind you. But very few people have hip extension these days. You should not be back very far unless you're a rare person these days. 
Um, and again, just keep trying to focus on getting the stretch, that line of tension by getting taller. Good, we're gonna breathe here. Let's give it at least three more breath cycles. Every breath in, get taller. Drive the shin into the ground. Every breath out, lots of core, lots of glute. And again, with this, we try to do a minute to two minute stretch. This is sort of a stretch beforehand, before we add our tails and nails. The longer you're here, the bigger the gains. However, I want at least two minutes of time under tension from beginning to end. Okay, so it's at least a minute or so of that line of tension. Let's do three pails and rails. So pails is engaging the hip flexor, so scissor. Right, pull back, back, pulls forwards. So your glue to the ground and scissoring. 10 seconds, nice strong into your abdominal wall. Seven, six, five, you want at least 80% of your max effort. You should be working hard. You should be uncomfortable here. Good, a little shaking. Three, two, one, and then reverse. Tons of core. This has to be higher intensity than the glute, but turn the glute on and try to bring this knee behind you. Not a lot of movement happening here, but this is that end range training that we want. Every millimeter here makes a difference. Five more seconds, glute is on, trying to bring that leg behind you, but without letting this change. No rib flares, five, four, three, two, one. Reverse, right into our second pails. Scissor, got it. Good, 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Keep breathing, stay tall, four, three, Two, one. Core is number one. Glute on. Yep, that's it. Ten. Go for it, you guys. You're on the clock. Keep trying to get tall. Fill that kidney area, but you're really trying to use your glute to get that knee as far behind you as you can. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm shaking. This is 90% probably of my maximum effort. You want at least 80. Greatest, safest effort. And release. One more set of nails and rails. Reestablish everything and scissor. Front foot pulls back, back knee pulls forward. I'm engaging this. Pails 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, and then switch to the glute and try to bring that knee behind you. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and release. Good. Whew, hip extension. Nice. Okay. From here, let's do a little bit of spine work. We'll get you to come into a compressed kneeling position. You can sit on a block here if it's hard to go down into this, or you can do this up in a quadruped, or you can do it sitting in a chair. I'd like to have your hands on the ground, or if you're in a chair, just have your hands on your knees. All right, three laps of flexion extension. So we always work on our linear capacities of our spine first before we do our rotations, which we're going to do today. So tuck the head, tuck the tailbone, push your hands into the ground, really round and think segmentally. Try to think at L5, are you fully flexed? Pull that belly button away from your hands, push your hands into the ground. Breathe and then extension, max extension, hands glue to the ground and pull yourself through. Tailbone on the back. And looking up to the sky, shoulder blades can squeeze together for a bit of a scapular assist if you want. And second lap, push the hands away. Maximum full action, really curl, pull the belly button away from your hands. Maximum extension, look up to the sky, tailbone to the sky. Shoulder blades are back there and spine is coming through them like there's a string attached to your sternum. One more lap of flexion. And extension. So just making sure each segment at least can flex and extend before we ask it to rotate. 
So never push in through pinching, especially with rotation here. Left hand is going to go in the center and right hand behind your back. And you are going to begin to rotate. Good. Chicken on this bit. Keep your waist long on both sides. Take a breath in to the right side. Try to rotate more. Out of the left side. Try to rotate more. Two more of those. Breath in to the right. Elbow, shoulder blade. Everything tries to rotate. Breathe out. One more breath cycle. Breathing in. Maximum expansion and breath out. Slowly release. Right hand in the center, left behind. And go see what this feels like. Breath into the left side, out of the right. Two more. Chicken on a spit. We don't want it to escape into side bending that frontal plane. We just want nice transverse plane movement, pure rotation. One more breath cycle. And unwind. Okay, from here, let's go into our 90 90. So ideally, front leg at 90, back leg at 90. If that's not comfortable, you can close in your knees a little bit more. The other thing is we need you upright. So if you're looking like a banana, feeling jammed up here, you can post out to the side. It's essential that this is straight. Or you can grab a pillow and you put it under that lead leg hip and it brings you up and just opens up a bit more space. So you can even grab a few pillows if you want. Good. Okay. And then from here, beautiful, nice hip hinge over that lead leg. And we're going to get you just to support yourself with your hands. And take a few breaths and try to relax. Okay. So this should be targeting a line of tension at the back of the left hip. Pure formus, five other hip rotators, some of your glutes, a lot of stuff, including hip capsule. 90-90 gets some deep things. All right, now I'm going to get you to radiate because in about three seconds we're going to take our hands away. Pack your belly and then drive your left knee, shin, and foot into the ground. Try not let anything move and slowly take your hands away and hold. 10 seconds. This is a passive range hold. Five more. I want you to really think of pushing the tailbone sit bone out the back. You got it good. You're like an airplane, nice and long. And then hands can come back down. All right, now don't pop out of this. You just earned that range. Relax that front leg and see if you can sink into a little bit more range. Okay. Now, irradiate again. We're going to do one more of these passive range holds. Drive the leg into the ground, knee, shin, foot. Irradiate. And let's take those hands away. You got it. Good. Hands up. Ten, nine. Tailbone out the back. Get as tall and vertical as you can. And so if you're trying to pass something to someone, good. Reaching, reaching, reaching. Three, two, one. And hands come down. Now stay there. We're going to try to log a little more time under tension here, but we're going to bring our attention to this back leg, the trail one. I'm going to get you to keep your foot on the ground, but I want you to try and lift your knee up to the sky like that. Good. Hold it. 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Nice open shoulders. Good. Don't want them round. Four. Three, high, 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 two, one, and slowly down. Nice. Reestablish. Make sure you're nice and deep. Pure hip hinge, straight spine. Foot goes into the ground on that. Well, it's an external rotation lift off we're doing. Let's go for it. Knee to the sky. Good. So this is a right hip external rotation lift off. We don't want any back movement. Our hands are helping us keep our back honest. And five more seconds. You should be shaking for. Three, two, one, and slowly down. Good. And then let's transfer to the other side. If you're good with your 90-90 bear sit transfer, 
You can think about bringing this knee up, keep the knees far apart, and you're going to come through there. So you can have your hands behind you if you want. I'm going to switch your hands so you can see me. So we're kind of there, keeping those knees apart. This right knee is searching for the ground, searching for the ground, searching for the ground. And when it finds it, then this one can come down. And just take inventory, see how you feel on this side today. If you need a pillow under here, great. If you need to close in your legs, fine. But I want you upright. Good. With that vertical spine, I'm going to get you to hinge forwards. Hands are on the ground. And let's just do three or four breaths. We try to relax that right hip. Should be feeling the line of tension through the back of the right hip. Nice. Good. Just melting. Long breaths out. Okay. Snuggle in. Tailbone at the back. Long spine. Shoulders open. And begin to irradiate. So, core and breathing. Good. Then driving knee, shin, foot down into the ground. Yep. You got it. Hold on. And lifting the hands off for a passive range hold. 10 seconds. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, don't pop out of it. Hands come back down and hinging forward. Hinging, good. If you've got the range, you should have a bit more. You usually get rid of some of that protective tension. Take a few breaths. And then begin to radiate. Core. Breathing, good. Then knee, shin, foot, driving into the ground. Push for me, good. Good, good, and lifting the hands off for a hold. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven. Try to stay vertical, get that tailbone at the back. We're really bowing that stretch, getting deep into that hip capsule. Five, four, three, two, one, and then hands come back down. We're locking this in, and let's bring our attention to the trail leg. Your left foot stays on the ground without your back moving. You can try to irradiate because you know this is end range. It's hard. You're going to try to bring your left knee up to the sky. How far does this one go? And make sure the pelvis doesn't move. We're locking everything in. It's pure hip motion. 10 seconds. Knee to the sky. 10, 9, 8, 7. Proud. Open chest. 4, 3, 2, 1. And slowly down. Control it. A couple of nice long breaths out. Make sure even the back of your neck is long. You don't want to be compressing. Stay open. Last one. Foot into the ground. Radiate and knee up to the sky. Left hip external rotation. Lift off. Ten, nine, eight. Give me everything you can. Drive that foot into the ground. Seven, six, five, four. Shoulders are open. Three, two, one. And slowly down. Nice. Spine, hips, shoulders, done. And really good stuff. Great job. I'm Michelle from Movement 101. So if you enjoyed this class, it is part of a free seven-day full body mobility challenge. All you need to do to access this full challenge is click the first link in the description below. I will send you a challenge calendar and all of the details so that you can get started right away. And if you did like this video, click like, hit subscribe, and take a moment to go down to the comment section and let me know what you would like more of. What can I do to help? Thanks for watching. Have a great day.